Good morning, everyone. This is Mike, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about importing and exporting objects, specifically JSON objects, um, in and out of PowerShell. So let me uh, switch over to my lab environment here, and we'll uh, have a look. All right. So, so when working with objects in PowerShell, you may have a need to import them in or export them out. There's a lot of different formats you can use. Uh, there's CSV, there's XML, there's JSON. Uh, if you're doing the exporting side, you could just do HTML. So there's a lot of different options available. And what we're going to be focusing on today is specifically the JSON. So let's say I have an object. So let's maybe say we'll use a service. Um, so maybe we'll have a look at the bit service. And let's say I want to take this object and I want to export it out um, in JSON format. So if I first of all look at what commandlets are available to me. So if I kind of use the get help commandlet and we look at things that, uh, that have JSON in their name, uh, we could see that there are two different commandlets to pick from. So there is convert from JSON and convert to JSON. So unlike other things, like if I maybe look at the help on, let's say, CSV, uh, you'll notice that there's the convert from and the convert to, but there's also an import and an export, right? So CSV has kind of like four different commandlets you can play around with. Uh, JSON just has two, right? Now, what the convert from and the convert to accomplish is they modify the object that's in PowerShell's pipeline and basically convert it to like JSON formatted text and then leave it in PowerShell's pipeline. Okay, so you would then have to take that text and write it out to a file if you wanted to accomplish, let's say, the full export. So again, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Now, the other thing I want to pay attention to is the object that you're working with, right? So a lot of people, when they're using PowerShell, you know, they'll run a commandlet, they'll look at the output that's produced on the screen, and again, think that that's, you know, everything that's there. And remember that when, you, when you're running a commandlet, if that commandlet produces output, it's normally in the form of a .NET object, right? And that .NET object is going to have properties and methods on it. Uh, properties meaning facts about the object, methods being actions you can take against the object. So you could see those things in action um, if you take the output of something and pipe it over to a commandlet called get member. Um, and that will allow me to see, you know, everything that is uh, that is being produced, right? So, so you know, by running or piping the output to get member, uh, we could see all of the properties that are on the object, uh, the methods that are there. Uh, in PowerShell, there's a couple extra properties added on. These are known as alias properties, um, and the type of object that was being produced, okay? And this is not some value made up in PowerShell that's literally referencing a .NET object. So if I took this, uh, this, this, this name here and, and put it into Google, you would get, you know, the, the, the .NET page for that particular object showing up in the Google search results. So when you want to export, you kind of have to think about like, what is it that you actually want to export? Okay. So, so do I want the object produced by running this? And do I want all the properties that go with it? Okay. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, so usually when you're doing an export, you don't want everything. And if you kind of leave PowerShell to its devices, it will give you everything. Okay, so if I take the result of this and send it over to uh, convert uh, convert to JSON, um, you know, like we could see, uh, you know, that's what we're getting, right? It, it did everything. Um, and that's not probably what, what I would be after, 
um, if you uh, you know if you if you think about it, right? So maybe I want to be a, a bit specific about it, right? So maybe I want let's say out of here. Maybe I want the name property. Maybe I want the status property. Maybe I want the start type property. Okay. Now the import and export and the convert from and the convert to commandlets, they're not intelligent enough to say, hey, uh, maybe you want some of the properties, but not all of them. So what you have to do is you have to prepare the data first in PowerShell before you then import or export it, if you will. Okay? In this case, exporting. Right, so I need to get rid of those properties before I do my uh, ultimately my export. Right, so now there's since we're going to be writing this out to a file, there's literally one way to do it. Right, um, some people would argue there's two, and those people would be wrong. So if you just want the data to show up on the screen, uh, there are there is two ways to do it. Right. So the one that you see popular out on, you know, blogs, tutorials and other YouTube videos is to send the result over to like, I don't know, like format table. Um, and then I could say the properties that I want. Let's see, those are what I'm going for. And right. So we have three properties. Right. And take that a step further and then do the convert to JSON and you're like, hey, now we're rocking. And it's uh, it's kind of like a hot mess, right? So so format table, actually any commandlet that, that has format in it, uh, they don't really modify the object in the pipeline, okay? Because remember, when we first started here, you know, what object were we working with? Well, let's go back to that get member Right, and this was the object we were working with. So again, it was a service controller, right? So when you uh, do an X, do do a format command, what format does is it takes the object that was originally there in the pipeline, and it substitutes it with a formatting object which has a whole bunch of properties. It, it has its own properties on it that look that are made to look normal when you see it on the screen the problem though is when you then want to take that screen output if you will and then do something else with it you get like a disaster right because it's not working with the original object it's working with these formatting things so instead what you want to do is you want instead of using format table uh, you use the command let select object. And what select object does is it's a lot, even though the screen output looks the same as format table, if you pipe the output of it over to get member, you'll notice that it didn't touch the object in the pipeline, like it didn't change it. Right. So if I take that same um, that same get member after format table, you know, and I kick it out here, uh, you'll notice like, you know, what you have in the pipeline is like a whole bunch of formatting objects and the original. Right. So it's all format group data, format end data, whatever. And the original service controller is not in here. Okay, so that's why, again, format table is not really helpful for this. So if you just want to do screen output, the format commandlets could be very helpful, but they're not for this because we don't want screen output. We want to write data out to a file. Okay, so, so with select object, where was that? So with select object, it keeps the original object that was in the pipeline, right, that was being produced from over here. So you have your service controller. But notice it's stripped off all the properties and the methods that we didn't explicitly tell it we wanted to keep. So that's basically what select object does. It's kind of like a decider. You, you, you tell it what properties to keep and it gets rid of the rest. Uh, so it's kind of like a whitelist, if you will. 
and all of the methods that were on the service controller are gone as well, except for a couple generic ones that are there for like every .NET object. So you're not kind of getting rid of these. So, so it's select object, you pick the properties you want to keep, and away we go. So now I could take the result of this, right? This, uh, this select object here, let me uh, make my PowerShell console a little wider here. Um, so let me take uh, the result of select object and pipe that now to convert to JSON. And notice what we get. Right, so, so we have properly formatted JSON data with the three properties that we wanted, okay? So, so that again, a little cleaner to kind of like read here. So you have kind of like the opening of the JSON, um, each line represents a property, okay? So you've got whatever the, the name of the property is over here, right? And then you've got the values over here, right? And then you've got the closing of the JSON. Right, so it's it's kind of easier to read in a in a way than XML is. Um, so that's again one of the benefits of JSON. Uh, for simple structure, it could be easier to read than XML would be. Right, and also if any of you play in Azure a lot, um, all of the objects you create in Azure are all described in JSON data as well. Right, so if you uh, if you use Azure, you probably have interacted with JSON at some point, right? Um, all right, so now we want this out to a file, right? So, so the text here, it is JSON formatted text, but it's not out to a file yet. So convert all the convert to command let's kind of do is they convert it to text but leave it in PowerShell's pipeline, which if you don't do anything with it, it just gets you know written out to the screen here. So what I need is I need a commandlet that'll take text, string, if you will, string objects, and write them out to a file. So that commandlet is uh, the commandlet out file, right? Um, so we're gonna use that, and we're gonna give it um, a file path, and again, let me make my uh, my screen a little wider here so I could fit this all in one line. Apologize. Uh, so file path. Let's do um, c colon the demo, and maybe we'll call this I know test dot json. All right. Ooh, just just not wide enough there. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. And if I look at my directory, which is uh, currently set to the c colon demo folder on my computer. There's my test of JSON, all right? So we got that going. So now if I go and uh, look at that file, so maybe we'll pop this open with notepad here, notepad.exe, test.json, uh, we can see the loveliness of the file, all right? So, hey, we've got JSON data. Now, here's the, here's the problem, all right? Um, here is the problem. And one of the reasons why I don't like working with JSON in PowerShell. Okay, so JSON's great for other things, but exporting PowerShell objects to JSON is not necessarily the best. There's kind of better ways to kind of work with this stuff. Uh, CLI XML is probably my favorite. Uh, but if you look at what the JSON looked like, Right, and you look at what the original query was, you know, that was being run. Okay, notice that status and start type kind of took, uh, they got changed, right? So notice status is stopped, but in the JSON data, it's status of one, and start type is manual, and start type is now three, right? So something's kind of like going on there. And in order to kind of see what's going on, one of the things you have to recognize within PowerShell is kind of you're working with .NET objects. And properties that may look like they're text or string may not be. Okay, so like if I take the result of, let's say, you know, get service, 
and pipe it over to get member again. Okay, notice that uh, status, the status property, is not like it's not like string or, or or integer or whatever. It's this service controller status object. And the start type's kind of the same way, right? It's like its own type of .NET object, right? So in PowerShell, when you look at these objects, they enumerate into certain values that that are in that are in text so it's easier for us to look at but in fact the actual .NET object stores the data in like a raw integer form right so like with status you know whether it's running or stopped um so basically with that a stopped is one and a running would be four you know, when you're looking at statuses, right? So that's why that one is there, right? Because that's the uh, the raw value uh, for that particular property on that .NET object. So when you're converting to JSON, it just keeps the raw value, right? It doesn't keep the enumeration uh, that, that .NET kind of puts on that type of data. Right, so so you're seeing, you know, like one and four, or start types would be like one, two, or three. You know, three is like a manual, two is like an auto. Right, so you lose kind of some of the 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 nuance of the objects when you kind of export them in this way. Right? Now, that may not be a big deal, but if you're going to import this data back into PowerShell later on, that could be a big deal. Right. So again, just kind of understand the nature, you know, of, of what's happening here. Okay. So now I just exported one object. Again, you could export multiple. Maybe I had a bunch of services, right? All the services that start with the letter B. Um, and again, let's say I want to convert that to JSON and export it out. So we could do convert to JSON. Um, and then we'll do our out file. Um, and the file path parameter, C colon demo, and maybe this will be test2.json. Right. So we'll go ahead and run that. All right. So that again, if I, uh, uh, let's see, so that was test2. So where's my notepad line? So let's do test2. And here is our JSON data. All right. All right, so notice each object kind of gets its own section, right, contained within a script block. Uh, then you got a comma, onto the next object, comma, onto the next object, and so on, right? And again, notice the name kind of came over as is because that's a string, uh, but notice status uh, and start type both got changed over, okay? So notice like, you know, four and two over here, one and three, one and three, four and two, right? So um, so that's, uh, again, oh, here's a four and three, different combination, right? So the raw data has been what is uh, kind of preserved here on the JSON data. All right. So now, uh, so that gets the JSON exported out. Now, the, the opposite of exporting is, let's say I want to import this data into PowerShell, right? Um, so, so you, first of all, uh, need to read the text in the file into PowerShell, right? Because let's say we're working with this file and I want to import it back into PowerShell and turn it back into like a .NET object or, or a PowerShell pipeline object, whatever, whatever way you want to consider it. You know, what could we potentially do here? So when looking at this, I first of all need to read the text file into PowerShell, right? So I could do that by using a command lick called get content. Uh, give it a, is it path or file path? path. Uh, so we'll give it a path, and we'll bring, how about we'll bring the, the first one in, right? So we load that in, and that does not kind of render it as JSON at this point, 
right? So all that did is it just literally read the text uh, of that file into PowerShell, and each line of text becomes a string object. So in fact, if you pipe this over to uh, get member, uh, you could see that it did in fact bring this data in as string, right? So, so we're working with string objects, and um, looking at it here, if I pipe the results over to a measure object, okay, I could see five because there's five lines of text, right? So it brought this data in as five string objects, which is definitely not what I want. You know, I want to turn it back into whatever it, it originally was, right? Because remember, we originally started with, uh, with let's say, uh, this, right? So we had um, objects with uh, three properties on it, name, status, and start type, right? So, so that's kind of where I want to get to. So in order to do that, uh, again, we first start by bringing the text data into PowerShell by using get content, and then we pipe it over to convert from JSON. And if we run that, um, it looks like uh, we've achieved the goal here, right? So there's, you know, the, the file that had a single object in it. And if maybe we do the file that had multiple in it, uh, there we go, right? So, so again, it did bring the data in kind of in that raw form, right? So notice status and start type are kind of broken, right? Here was what the original data looked like, right? And that's definitely not the same as that, right? So we'll, we'll get to that in a minute here uh, because the first thing we need to do is we need to fix what was imported in. Okay, and the reason why I say fix it, uh, when you run, I, I don't know if it's like whoever kind of created this command lit, if, if whatever they did, you know, was, was different or special or whatever. But when you look at the data, uh, specifically, if I take the result of this and I bring it over to measure object. I should see a, a number, a count of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, right? Because there's 11 objects here. But if I do measure object, right, it's just seeing one, okay? Um, so what kind of happens with convert from JSON is it brings the data in as like a, like a single JSON object. Uh, think of it as almost like an outer shell, right? And you want to get to like, you know, the, the, the inside of that shell, which is where your 11 objects are, right? So just convert from JSON doesn't quite do that. Um, another tip to kind of know that, that this is happening, again, remember the data inside the JSON file, it has properties of name, status, and start type, right? So, if I take convert from JSON and then pipe that over to uh, get member, you know, what object is being produced? Well, notice it's just some generic object and notice the properties on it are not the properties of the data that's inside this JSON file. Like they're properties for JSON itself. Right, and that's certainly not what we want, okay? So what we need to do is we need to crack that object open. We need to take the JSON object that's produced by doing convert from JSON, and we need to crack it open like you're cracking an egg, right, to get the, the data inside of it into PowerShell's pipeline, right? So there's two ways to do that. Um, so both kind of use a method that's called enumeration, okay? So enumeration. Um, so enumeration is basically a, a way that you can grab the, the objects that are in the property of the object in the pipeline. Um, or you can use enumeration to call methods as well, 
All right. So when you want to uh, grab the data that's in a property of another object that's already in the pipeline, or if you want to call a method, both ways that, that we use enumeration. Now, in this approach, uh, we can use enumeration uh, by running the for each object commandlet. Okay, so I could do for each object, um, give it a process parameter, uh, which uses a script block, and then you call the variable that represents the object in the pipeline. So dollar underscore or dollar ps item. Okay, either one will work. Um, I normally use dollar underscore, and that will enumerate each uh, each piece of data that's inside the JSON object. So the output looks kind of the same, right? So you might be thinking, well, you know, Mike, that 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 doesn't look right. You know, when I just did the original JSON, kind of looks exactly the same, but here's how you can kind of tell that it enumerated it. Pipe it over to measure object and notice there's 11 things in the pipeline now. Okay, so this took, grabbed all 11 of them and put them into the pipeline. Okay, right? again, the other way that you can kind of view it is to bring it over to get member. Um, and you can see again, now we have a PS custom object and we have the three properties that are on the data that was in the JSON file, okay? So name, status, and start type, right? Because that's what we were originally uh, starting with here, right? So pulling the text file in, that's what we originally started with, name, status, and start type, right? So, so the data on the object in the pipeline, the properties on the object in the pipeline, is now matching uh, what we uh, what was in the original import file. Okay, right? so that's all nice. Okay, so that was one technique uh, that we could use to enumerate. All right, so uh, we do for each object uh, process uh, open curly bracket dollar underscore, which again is a special PowerShell variable that represents the objects in the pipeline put there by the previous command. So in dollar underscore only works when you're inside of a parameter that accepts a script block uh, for its data type, right? So notice if I, you know, bring up PowerShell's help system um, for the for each object commandlet, right? Notice in the syntax here, if we go find process, the process parameter, which is what I was using, right? So process, notice what type of data does it take? It takes a script block, All right? So that is, again, a type of .NET object. It's basically a bunch of code inside of curly brackets. So the dollar underscore or the dollar PS item, either way, uh, represent the objects in the pipeline put there by the previous commandlet, right? Um, so that's what we're, we're calling there. So that was one way that we could do enumeration. Now, what would be the other way? So the other way is to utilize your own variables. So what you do is you take the result of the get content and the convert from JSON and put it in a variable. So maybe I'll just call it dollar JSON. I mean, you call it whatever you want, dollar peanut butter, dollar elephant, dollar crocodile, whatever. Um, so dollar JSON, so take the result, put it in this variable, and then all you have to do is literally just call the variable, right? And that will get you the 11 objects that were in there, right? Because if I pipe this over to, to measure object, um, you can see that there's 11. In fact, because it's a variable, you all variables have a count property on them, you could see that there's 11 objects in there, right? So stuff it in a variable and then call the variable. And that would be the other way to get it done, right? Um, so that would be the two approaches that you could use um, to basically get the, op the, the data from inside the JSON object, all right? Now, the second thing we need to do 
is we should probably fix these properties so they look correct. Uh, again, if you're going down the rabbit hole, you might as well go down a little further, right? So originally, uh, when we looked at the services, let me bring this up here. Uh, so when we looked at the services, if we piped that over to get member, uh, the original data was a service controller. Um, not that I really care about that, okay? But notice the properties, right? So the name property is not really there. It's really an alias for service name. So service name, service name is a string. So that's fine. That comes over good. Uh, status though is not good, right? So it was originally a service controller status object. And if I go find my get member output from somewhere up here, um, notice after, you know, you do enumeration, notice status was not a service controller status object anymore. It's now an integer, right? And start type again was also an integer. Okay, so that's what they import as. If you have, you know, a number, you know, when you import it into PowerShell, it's probably going to make it an integer uh, if it has no decimal places. If it has decimal places, it will come in as a double object. Okay, but so notice originally start type was this type of object and status was this type of object, right? So that's a problem. So we want to fix that. So when I when I call my variable that has the JSON data in it, you know, they're coming in as integers, right? So take that data, pipe it to get member, and integers all around, right, for status and start type. So what I need to do is I need to take these properties and I need to convert them from an integer object to whatever this, you know, these types of objects are. Right. So I need to do uh, so I need to make that fix. Right. So how do we go about doing that? Well, uh, when you're working with PowerShell, if you have objects in PowerShell's pipeline and you want to change them from something, some from one type of object to another type of object, you can use something in PowerShell that's called a calculated property. So what I do is I uh, use select object and uh, we specify the properties we want to keep. So now I I'm fine with name. I want to keep that. And then status and start type, I, I, can't, I can't just keep them. I need to make a calculated property out of them. So I'm going to kind of convert what's there into something else. So let's start with status first because that's kind of the shorter one. Right. Um, so, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a calculated property. Now, to do this, you create a construct in PowerShell that's called a hash table. So, a hash table starts with an at sign and an opening and a closing curly bracket. And then inside the curly bracket, you have to define two different fields. Uh, you need to define a label field, which is what your property that you're making is called, and then an expression field which says what the data is for your property. So let's first start with label um, equals, and then what do I want to call the property I'm making? Well, I don't want to make a new one, right? I want to call the new, call the, call the stuff I'm making status, right? So I'm making a new version of the status property. So that's the name of it. And then you're going to do a semicolon and then you're going to do expression equals. And then that's going to take a script block. So inside the script block, I'm going to reference the object in the pipeline by dollar underscore. And then I use dot as a separator. Um, and then I want to say I want the status property. And I want to uh, do something known as casting casting, right? So casting is basically where you're going to say what type of object you want this to be. So this line right here is calling the data that's in the existing status property, and I'm going to recast it by using the as parameter 
into a different type of object. Right? So what type of object? Well, I'm doing status here, right? So the original status was this type of object. So I'm going to grab that. I don't want to type all of that. And I'm going to put that in, um, in a bracket. Not a curly bracket, but a straight bracket. So I open a straight bracket, paste that value in, close that bracket. So I'm recasting it as this type of object. And if I hit Enter, uh, so notice what have I done so far. With select object, I've defined I want to keep the name property as is, and I want to make a new property called status, and this is the junk that's going to go in it. Okay? So I'm just going to hit enter to see if that works. Right? So cool. So we got name and status, so that's rocking and rolling there. All right? Now, with your calculated property that we just made, um, there is a bit of abbreviation you could do to it. Um, expression doesn't have to be the full word expression. Uh, it can literally just be E equals. And then label uh, can just be L equals. Right? So that's, um, so that at least saves a little bit of typing. Um, and again, notice that'll work fine. Okay? Now, uh, the label part, believe it or not, can actually be also... I'm not going to do it here, but it could also be n equals or name equals. Uh, either of those would also work as well. Okay? But I like using label, so that's kind of what I'm going to go with. So we'll do l equals. All right. So we've now fixed the status, and we need to mess with the start type now. right? So, so we still need to fix start type. So it's an integer, but the original start type... Uh, was this type of object right here, okay? So I'm just going to copy that so I don't have to type, you know, this out again. Copy that. And let's go make, let's bring up the command that worked before, um, and let's go make another um, calculated property, all right? So let's do a comma, and then we'll do another calculated property. I apologize, it's going to carriage return because of the width of my screen. Uh, but we'll do, in this case, we'll do L equals, um, and this time we'll call it uh, start type, which is, again, what it originally was. Uh, so that's start type, then semicolon, and then my expression uh, inside that script block for the expression. We'll grab the object in the pipeline, we'll grab the data out of the start type property, and we'll recast that data as this type of object. And there we go. So there's the um, so there's the two properties now fixed. Okay? So we've got the name, which was again as a string, and we've fixed status and start type, so they are now correct. Right? And again, the the whole, you know, this is again the second fix we had to do. Uh, because remember, bringing the data in, uh, we loaded that ultimately in the variable to start with um, and then enumerated the variable. Okay? So again, remember that when you do convert from JSON, the data comes in as one JSON object and you need to break it apart to get the, orig you know, the data that's inside of it. So I got to, you know, load that in a variable, call the variable. That's the first fix you got to do. And then the second fix was fixing the properties uh, to what their actual values were. Because when we exported the data uh, into JSON to start with, right, it, it kind of lost, uh, its, uh, it lost its, its stuff, right? So that's the second fix. All right, so if you guys have never used calculated properties before, it's a good thing to know about, right? Because it allows you to potentially change whatever properties are on the objects in PowerShell's pipeline. So it's good for this, but I use calculated properties all over in other areas as well. So they definitely do come in handy. All right. So that is the uh, that is the importing side uh, when we're working with JSON data. So that's uh, going to do it for this video. I thank you for watching, and hopefully we'll catch you in the next one.
So have a good one, everyone.